Very often during our sessions, you guys ask me about the role of theoretical framework uh, in data analysis, in your study. So we're looking at your studies, um, you're about to analyze your data, and your question is quite often, uh, how do I bring in that theoretical framework? So for example, there is a theoretical framework uh, widely accepted, widely used in my, in my field of study, whatever it is. Uh, I discussed it in my literature review, and the purpose of this study is pretty much to investigate uh, the applicability of that framework for my context. So what do I do? Do I only focus on the elements from the framework or uh, what the analysis, uh, what the process of analysis looks like, looks like in, this, uh, in this case? So, uh, so here in this video, I want to explain the steps and the role of theory of such theoretical frameworks and how to and when to bring them into our analysis. So firstly, when uh, you ask me this question, my, uh, my first response is usually it depends, as, as quite often, uh, as it is quite often the case uh, with qualitative research and lots of questions uh, that you ask me. Because as you know, qualitative research is so uh, flexible, dynamic, that's why it depends. And, and specifically in this case, what it depends on is uh, how you constructed your uh, data collection methods. So, uh, so again, the situation is that you have this framework, there is this framework that exists, uh, you discuss this framework extensively and you feel like this framework is at the core of your study, which I understand. But then the question is, did you use that uh, framework to develop your, uh, your data collection methods? And uh, the second question, the follow-up question is, how strongly uh, are your data collection methods based on that framework? So here, assuming that uh, we're talking about an interview, for example, so let's, let's just assume it for the purpose of this uh, video. Uh, you have this framework, a, a theoretical framework, you applied it when you were developing your interview questions, which is, again, completely fine. But the question is, is it entirely based on this framework? Are you only asking about the elements of this framework in your study? Or did you leave any scope for emergent findings, any scope for, uh, for more inductive and exploratory findings to emerge from these interviews? So sometimes uh, some of you and some researchers in general uh, use this framework, this existing theoretical framework, uh, to guide the whole interview. So, like I said, the whole interview guide is literally only based on that framework and exploring the elements of that framework. So let's imagine there is a framework for how migrant identity is being formed and there are certain elements and the researcher only asks about these elements and nothing uh, nothing more, no more than that. So, so this is the, the entire purpose of the study is just to investigate these elements, so basically to maybe replicate another study. If that's the case, in, in that case, there is really not that much you can do with your data analysis, uh, in addition to simply adopt, uh, to g uh, adopt this framework and let it guide your, your analysis, your, your uh, thematic framework that you are developing and your coding initially. So, so of course your codes and later themes would very closely uh, reflect that framework because there is not m much you can do. You, you decided to structure the whole interview based on that framework. Uh, bear in mind that there is nothing wrong with that. So as I'll explain in a second, I usually do recommend a slightly different approach, but there are studies that do this. They only want to replicate another study. They are not interested in any uh, anything else. So if you've done that, don't worry. I don't mean to say that this is a, a wrong approach. However, as I often say, if, you, if you're if you still at the phase of, let's say, developing your interview questions or whatever your data collection, uh, collection methods are, uh, I usually recommend a different approach because I feel that it's, uh, it's just better to leave more scope for emergent findings, like I said. So I feel that whilst it is, of course, a valuable study, the one that only explores uh, the applicability of the previously established framework. Of course, there is plenty of value in that as well. I feel that if you are spending time doing this study, if you're spending time reading the literature, describing that literature, developing your methods, talking about your methods, talking about your findings, I feel like it's best to use that opportunity 
to also contribute a little bit more to at least see if you can contribute a little bit more and by this i mean it's a good idea to uh, develop uh, let's say an interview guide if that's a, a study based on interviews where there is this scope for additional findings so like i said even if there is this framework it has let's say seven points or whatever number of points that you want to explore it's good to have them in your interview guide but i would always strongly encourage you to also have questions that are more open-ended and exploratory so for example if there are factors that i want to ask about before asking about these factors from that framework so again remember we're talking about let's say migrant identity before i ask them do you think that your motivation do you think that your language competence whatever it is from that framework before uh, asking if they think it influences for example their migrant identity i want to ask some general questions such as what do you think may you know influence how you feel or how you know your identity or whatever it is that i'm exploring so uh, there are several reasons why i want to do this even if you really want to focus on just uh, confirming and supporting that theoretical framework so again arguing that it is a good framework it is applicable in your context even if that's your sole purpose of this study by uh, leaving these uh, leaving these questions more open-ended you are uh, you're making it more likely that your your study will be even more valuable because if uh, you ask this kind of questions and they still come up with similar responses to the ones that the framework suggests so for example the framework says english competence is important and i ask the participant a question what factors do you think influence your experience or whatever it is that i'm i'm asking them and they say i think english competence plays a role then of course it even adds more value to that framework again because i never suggested this response and even though I didn't, they still talk about the elements that the framework uh, puts forward. So that's how I like to start. And then, of course, you can still ask the questions about the specific elements of the framework. Because, like I said, maybe that's your main purpose. But still, prior to doing that, I like to start by giving them a chance to, uh, to discuss what they feel and what they think about this topic. Because I feel, like I said, I feel like... The purpose of qualitative research and the value of it is to explore people's uh, points of view. So while you're already at it, while you're spending that time doing implementing and designing that study, why not see if maybe there is something additional that may emerge? Uh, and if it does, you can enrich that framework. You can contribute to, to developing, for example, a new theory. So now a related question. Uh, is of course what happens at the, at the stage of data analysis so when you code that data like i said if you are 100 percent completely focused only on that framework then you will probably be just coding just looking uh, for the things that uh, that uh, reflect the elements of that framework which is completely fine so it's, it's almost it's pretty deductive in nature because you're straight away just you can even create the codes uh, if you're using software, you can create the codes first and then uh, these codes that represent the different factors that you had in mind going into the study and then just look at the interview data and just apply these codes to whenever these topics are being discussed. If, however, your approach was a bit more open-ended and exploratory, just like the one I described, so you did have uh, some scope for additional findings, you ask them to, to first reflect and tell them what they think prior to, for example, asking them about the specific elements of the framework. Uh, in that case, what I usually say is just basically imagine that the framework doesn't exist. Forget about the framework for now and just do the analysis uh, just from you know this bottom-up approach. So just from scratch, do the analysis from scratch, completely exploratory and inductive analysis. I won't go into detail of this here because I do have several videos in which I talk about thematic analysis and coding. But the point is, uh, forget the framework and just focus on, on analyzing the data as you normally would in any other study. So this again uh, increases validity of your study. Uh, nobody can criticize you for focusing or over relying on that framework, potentially missing some important findings because what you're doing is like I said, extremely inductive. You're only focused on the data. Your findings are only foc uh, only emerge from the data itself. And then, so when do we bring in that framework? When do we bring it back to, to our study? 
is after you are done with that thematic framework of yours. So you're developing, you're doing the coding, you're developing the themes, you're coming up with a thematic framework, for example, one including factors influencing migrant identity. And only at that point, you're looking towards that framework that already exists. And for example, comparing the wording and making sure that what, what you're talking about is consistent in terms of the wording. And I don't mean uh, changing the framework if it's different, but I mean just using same uh, types of expressions or terms or words for the things that do exist in the other framework. So basically, because there is no point confusing the readers, if I, if I came up, for example, with something that I called a face saving and the other framework calls um, social image or something like that, I will change the wording in my framework to social image to, to make it even clearer later to the reader how and where these frameworks overlap. But uh, so yeah, so I will clean it up a little bit and at the end I will try to make sure that if there are overlaps they, they are consistently named. But otherwise, like I said, the whole idea is that you start from ground up and you're developing your framework and only at the end you're looking at the other one. And again, as I've been saying throughout this video, it really adds to the value of your study, it really adds to uh, increase the validity of your findings as well because you did the whole work, you are not influenced by that framework in your analysis, in the process of data analysis. Now finally, the whole approach would of course be different if uh, these existing frameworks or the theoretical frameworks existing in your field were not used to develop the interview guide. That's yet another situation. I have a separate video uh, just about uh, this topic. So basically what happens, and this is probably the most common outcome, the most common scenario is that uh, whilst some frameworks do exist in your, in your field, so some theories, some, some theoretical frameworks, some uh, suggestions, some models exist in your field, uh, you're not using them to specifically develop your interview guide. So of course you're aware of them and they will have played some you know, role in, in, your, uh, in you developing your study and possibly thinking of, of uh, to some extent, thinking of your interview questions or whatever it is that, uh, that you're using to collect the data. You don't always have to uh, explicitly use that framework in your data collection stage. So you may just be aware of them and of course at some point you will comment on the similarities again or differences between what you found and what has previously been uh, suggested. But it doesn't mean that you're using that to either develop your uh, data collection methods or to guide your data analysis. Like I said, this this question is explored uh, in more detail in the, this other video that I have. So here is that video, feel free to explore it. Meanwhile, feel free to ask questions if you have any. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, if you learned something new and share it to help others find it.